How's it going, YouTube? Stocks by the numbers. Wanted to do another quick video that someone brought up here. Someone asked about Fuel Cell Energy, ticker symbol FCEL, listed here on the NASDAQ. Now, of course, Fuel Cell Company, everyone ties it in with their one of their top peers, Plug Power. Plug Power started doing good, so everyone started pumping up this stock doing good here. Back in, I remember it was, yeah, like November, December, you all started pumping it up. The stock climbed all the way up to, I don't even know. What are we looking at here? 29, 29, 44, just absolutely ridiculous. And then immediately comes crashing back down to earth to about six and a half, tries to bounce up, and of course has really just been slipping ever since then. And this is why, again, you don't chase historic highs and you don't buy stocks for no reason and um, obviously all that nonsense. But, you know, let, let's just look at fuel cell overall. Let's see what's going on here. So 223 a share up six cents, 2.76% there on the day. Uh, pretty close to the 52-week low there of $1.77. Now, the company has some good things, had some bad things going on. Right now, market cap, little over $900 million. The company's still losing money per share, about $0.32 cents a share. Uh, you come down here, they only beat on the EPS side recently, missed the three of the last four quarters. It looks like uh, they may potentially be turning it around, though, as you see here. The revenue, that's the problem. The revenue has been really bouncy and really inconsistent. And even though it was in the 30s, as you see here, high mid-teens jumped up to north of 40 and basically kind of maintained that 40 mark, but has been slipping there for the last couple of quarters in a row. And of course, regardless of how much money the company makes, they still lose significantly more than they bring in. Uh, however, revenue sub uh, 90 million, as you see, about 60, 70 million. And then boom, we have a pop up up to about 130 and a half million. So you know, definitely a good sign. However, again, the company seriously struggling on the profitability side. So, you know, bringing in 130 million. Again, as we see here, we're looking at what was that like five times? Yeah, like five and a half times yearly revenue to market cap comparison. So not too crazy, not too crazy. But again, to uh, put this in the list, like we just looked at backed holdings or whatever it is, BKKT, you know, on the short interest here, you know, again, Fintel, we're seeing short interest percent of the float at only about 16.4%. That's what I mean. That That's not too high. And again, for a company coming in with sporadic revenue, um, th th this is what's supposed to happen, right? This is what's bothering me, bothering me about a lot of you new age investors. You know, you guys... You see fuel cell or hydrogen companies or, or just an electric stock and, and you think it should go to the moon just because of what the company is doing. That is in no way, shape or form how this crap works, just to let you know in case you're new to the scene here. If you pull up companies like you look at your Walmarts, your Amazons, uh, your Microsofts, even NVIDIA as of late, in my opinion, they took it a little too high. But the point is you have to look at the consistent, steady positivity coming out of these companies that in turn results in steady, consistent growth on the stock, right? A company like this is not going to go from two and a quarter to $24 a share just because you like it or people should be moving to hydrogen cell cars or whatever the hell this company is involved in. really doesn't matter because, again, we go back. <clears throat> Excuse me. Numbers do not lie. And, again, you can see here, look at this, $21.7 million for the quarter. The company has been around for years and years and years. These are how small these estimates are, and then they miss by 35%, right? And then look at the next quarter. Estimates of 26.27. The company comes in with almost 32 million, right? So they're just all over the place. Look at this. Next quarter, 32.5 million. They come in with half of that. And then estimates north of 35 million, and then they come in with 43 million. It's, it's just too unpredictable, right? And then they show, oh, you just made 43 million, so we'll put estimates up at 46 million. Oh, no, we did sub 40 million. And then, okay, we'll bring estimates down to $26.8 million for you. Oh, no, we did $37 million. So <clears throat> I honestly personally have no idea what's going on with this stock because I am seeing no, no consistency whatsoever. And, um, again, just because uh, it's been beaten up or short interest is increasing, that, that is not a reason why a company like this should be on your radar. Now, the one thing you have going for you is if you go all the way back here, basically since the bull dropped in 2022, going from that low to that high, you can see that we've kind of been in this downward descending wedge channel for quite some time, which technically is a bullish pattern. But again, you can see if we really want to bring out these lines here, you, this apex might not be hit until the end of this year, 2023, maybe going into 2024. <clears throat> but overall, it technically is a bullish pattern. 
long term, of course, and you have this quarter. I mean, look at how low these estimates are, 25.494 million, right? When the company posted, you know, high 30s and 40 plus million in, in a quarter, you know, now estimates are down at 25.4 million. So, you know, this is what I mean. This is why I can't get hyped about a company like this because, you know, you, you keep missing. So then they keep slipping down the estimates. And now you were bringing in 40, 43 million. Now estimates are only 25.4 million. So one of two things are going to happen here, right? Either A, the company's going to come out. Oh, we did uh, 36 million. You thought, you know, we were only going to do 25 million. Oh, okay, great. So I guess I can understand a short term pop on that. Uh, however, it's not, it's probably not going to be consistent. So it's going to pop on the good news and then sell off when everyone takes their profits and get back into this range. Or on the flip side, to be massively negative, estimates of 25 and a half million. What if the company comes in with like 16 million again and they miss by a mile, right? What are you going to do? Just completely crash this down to new lows here, dollar twenty, dollar twelve, and, and that's what I'm saying. Something like this. A high short interest, people are talking about it online, something could happen. In my opinion, it is just not worth your attention. Look at this downtrend you have been in, again, for a, a year and a half, 16 months, 18 months, whatever it is. Meanwhile, again, you look at something like a Rolls Royce that I brought to you guys here on this channel, ticker symbol R-Y-C-E-Y. You, you can see the stock was down at a dollar twenty. Then it ran up to $1.88, $1.92, right? That's over a 50% move. You look at companies like SoundHound, STEM Inc. These were all companies that we said had growing revenue, looked like they're growing and they're showing consistency. These are the stocks you should be worth, you should own. They're all up 50 plus percent from the first time we looked at them. And meanwhile, you know, you might be sitting here holding a fuel cell, just waiting and hoping that, you know, this stock is going to get acquired or all of a sudden like Tesla is going to team up with them or something. Of course, if something like that happens, the stock is absolutely going to explode and it would be justified. But to tell me that the stock has been around for years and years and years and years. And again, look, we go back here. Look, May 19, May 2019, reverse stock split, one for 12. We come back before here, December 2015, reverse stock split, one for 12. We fast forward to currently, and what do we have? We have a company that is inconsistently beating and missing revenue estimates here. Look, they came in line and, and slight beat three quarters in a row, and then you have a massive miss by over 30% on the revenue side, and then you follow it up with another 26% miss. Look at this. And then now you're up. Oh, oh but now you're down by 30 40%. Now you're up again. Oh, I'm down by 50%. It's like, what is the point of me owning this stock? If literally every three months we can either beat revenue or we can just come in 40 50% light and just go into a downslide and just sell off. And that's why a situation like this, like, I, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it because I, I feel like in 2023, everyone's pretty tech savvy and we're all pretty, you know, much more open minded than we were 20, 30 years ago talking about all these new vehicles, all these different batteries, charging stations we have going on and everything like that. So that's why after all this time with everything going on, the fact that a company like this that has been around for ridiculous amount of time have seen highs have seen lows we got reverse stock splits you're coming in you're making over 100 million a year then it drops down to 60 but now you're back up to over 100 million a year it's like with all this going on you still can't find your footing you still can't get your consistency going that's what raises a red flag for me so again, yeah, in the short term, could it pop out of this wedge and a potential short squeeze you guys are hoping for, good earnings, and the stock goes from uh, 223 to, you know, 5? Yeah, great. Okay, it could happen. It could happen. But again, why not just look for better situations to where essentially you could say you know what's going to happen as opposed to hoping that something could happen, right? So just looking at the inconsistency, something like fuel cell – would not be a buy in my opinion. Seeing a short interest uh, percent on the float here of 16.4% is not that high. GameStop was 106% or whatever the hell it was, right? That's 16%. So that's why I'm, I'm really not understanding what's going on here. We come back, we look at some of the news articles. What am I seeing here? There you go, 87 million. Okay, financing facility. Very nice. Okay. Uh decarbonization hydrogen deal with chart industries let's see what's going on here climate company and said sign a memorandum of understanding with chart industries to combine their decarbonization and hydrogen technologies 
Uh, stock declined 15% ever since the year started. <laughs> Chart Industries, the manufacturer of engineered cryogenic equipment, will add its knowledge on CO2 and hydrogen compression and liquefaction, as well as equipment for the entire supply chain of both molecules. So what it sounds like is Chart Industries might be the company to buy based on what I just read. It sounds like they have a hell of a lot more to bring to the table than Fuel Cell potentially does. But again, that was just one report, of course. But again, back throughout the years, the, the way the company, the stock price has been massively sporadic. Look at these highs. Look at these low swings. Uh, again, multiple reverse stock splits inconsistent earnings reports. I'm, I'm not seeing much that's going on here. And again, we could look at the assets that they're holding, but you know, I'm, I'm really not too impressed here. Whatever this was obviously stopped for about two years. Uh, you do see the generation numbers seem to be consistently climbing year over year. Advanced technologies contracts climbed up to almost 26 million when everything was hitting the fan. Um, and then slightly pulled back and has pulled back even more from about high 25 million down to about 21 and a half million service agreements and license. As you see here, bouncing around was north of 30 comes down to 15 climbs back up to 25. Now it's less than half that down to 12.8. Looks like all the business coming from South Korea and the, and the U S which again is fine, but it's just not consistent. And if we look at our estimations here, look at this. Uh, coming in, losing 38 cents a share for the year, estimates minus 34 cents. And then look, minus 27, 27, 20, 41. So somehow they're slightly still going to be very negative and then become even more negative with a big jump in revenue in 2026. Right. So estimates here, 137 million. The company comes in with 130 million for the year. You can see haven't been in line with analyst expectations since 2018. And obviously on the EPS side, a lot of inconsistency as well. But again, you can see, look, now we're at estimates were, again, 137 million. They only came in with 130. So now they got a lower estimates to 135.7 million, which is never a good sign. That's what I'm saying. So now we have to wait and see if the company comes in with these numbers. And then you fast forward almost 200 million, almost 300 million, over 400 million. And the company, again, is going to drop down and have an even wider loss off of that 400 million in 26 than they had off of less than 300 million back in 2025. So that's what I mean. Even with the company starting to rock and roll, uh, expectations still aren't too high. And again, the fact that you can just consistently decrease in revenue for uh, five years in a row and then somehow make the comeback and now it's just like consistent up and up. Where's the downtrend again? We were higher, then we went lower. Now we got higher again. How come the forecast might not be potentially lower, right? Of course, that, that's what I'm saying. That's why when people always tell me, oh, look at the forecast. Look at what they're estimating for 2025. It's like, yeah, of course. What do you think they're going to say? What do you really think they're going to say? Oh, we missed by 7 million, 130 million. By 2025, we're only going to make 40 million. Like, come on, guys, come on. Of course, the expectations are always going to be higher and better than the current situation. That's why they're called expectations. Switching over here, the company doesn't have a PE because they're hemorrhaging. Uh, price to sales is down to a little less than six and a half. As you can see, it was significantly lower and of course, just in the last couple of years has exploded uh, for reasons kind of unbeknownst to me, uh, trading 1.32 times book value as of late. Again, since 2020, yeah, it might be high since younger investors, potential stimulus money came in and pumped this stock to the moon that it did not deserve at all. But of course, looking at the years prior to that nonsense, you can see price to book was actually could be considered higher than where it was the median average over these, you know, previous four or five years here. Enterprise value, nonsense, nonsense. Return on assets technically has been trending in the right direction for about the last five years. Uh, return on equity as well, and return on invested capital as well. The problem is this current, right, th this is hard to take in, into account because they're laying out these numbers based on like just the first quarter 
of 2023 that came in. So that's why sometimes I don't even look at the current, and I'll just look at the previous uh, column there of the year prior in 2022. And you can see here the return on invested capital. See, it moved back down supposedly currently. However, it did kind of climb back up there, and you're seeing the same thing with the gross margin. See, it's showing a great jump here, currently sitting at 14%, but the year is not over, so that number is not set in stone. And before that, as we see, we were positive, and then we dropped negative and just began to free fall from minus 1.5%, minus 7.5%, minus 15.25%, minus 21 plus percent. So that's why a lot of these numbers, they want to currently say, are trending in the right direction, which is fine. However, it's, it hasn't happened until it happens. So as of right now, going back to the comparisons of 2018, 19, 21, 20, 22, all those, you can see that some of these numbers are in fact trending in the opposite direction that they should be trending in. Operating margin was down in minus 40s and then exploded up, got to minus 55% and then minus 86 over minus 100%. The EBITDA was up to minus 28% and then slipped to double that, basically, minus 57%, and then almost double that, minus 92.5%. Net margin percentage, obviously, has just been minus a dollar plus for every dollar that they're making. So, again, really not seeing the hype behind the stock. The one thing that I'm seeing here is the inventory turnover, which, as you see here, was up to 1.4, 1.23, and then jumped down into the low ones and was kind of, look, maintain 139, 129, and then just had a big pop here in the last year or two, 1.95, 1.82. This is a very, very good sign. However, again, people want to talk about the assets they have on the balance sheet, which is why the stock value should not be going lower. However, again, the asset turnover, which is essentially, you know, how well they're generating money based off of the value of assets. And you can see here that it is down about 50% in value going all the way back to 2016. So, yeah, it was slipping and did have a little bounce up here. But again, it, it's not as good as it once was. And they took more assets, more liabilities onto the balance sheet. So, uh, no, I'm going the wrong way. Uh, statements. Everything pretty much negative. Balance sheet. Again, you can see the assets climbing. It really was steady since 2020, and then, of course, massive explosion, so uh, assets jumped up to $500 million, $875 million, $940 million, where it's currently sitting. Liabilities was higher and have now since pulled back to about $185 million. Again, assets minus liabilities is the equity, so this is the highest equity the company's had since going all the way back to 2016. However, again, you know, look at the debt here. We're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars in debt. Book value per share, $1.69. So if the company does start to have a, you know, a serious pullback here, uh, you could be looking at an easy 25 30% haircut here. More importantly, you can see the big climb, again, in revenue. Very, very happy. However, look at the cost of goods sold, the absolute highest it has been, now significantly outweighing the total revenue coming in by about, I want to say, maybe about 15% plus what total revenue is which, of course, revenue minus cost of goods sold yields our gross profit, which, as you see here, is seriously negative here, tens of millions. And then, boom, look at the operating expenses, up essentially 200% from back in 2016-17, going from $40 million in change up to $114 million, still sitting at about minus $100 million. And you can see the operating income, the lowest it has been in several, several years. So that's why this company is still struggling with its profitability. This company is still struggling with consistent revenue coming in. Uh, the company over the years, again, known for reverse stock splits. I'm very happy to see that the revenue has since climbed up back to that 100 plus million mark. But again, just consistently missing on the EPS side, on the revenue side here. Uh, happy to see that cash, cash equivalents climbed up here, 400 plus million. And again, debt was up to showing 195 million there, has since pulled back to about 90 million. We have assets outweighing liabilities. I mean, listen, this is honestly a situation where you're only in favor of this stock and think it should be higher if you're either thinking about owning it, work at the company, or already own it. I'm sorry, but that's just really what it is. Because if you tell me this stock goes from 223 
you know, down to a dollar fifty, I, I think it would be justified. And if you guys explode this again from two twenty three up to seven, nine, eleven dollars, I just want to let you know that, in my opinion, would not be justified. But of course. You know, I, I wish everyone the best of luck, whatever your position is. If you are long the stock, I do wish you well. Here, looking at the daily, uh, you can see it has been bouncing around really since uh, May. And the RSI sitting here at 50 still has room to grow, even though the stock sold off, bounced off this bottom Bollinger Band and has since been climbing. Looks like the MACD actually just kind of crossed to the upside. However, uh, the stock, again, high of 228, so didn't quite get to that 50-day moving average of 230, and then pulled back and closed that 223, one cent below the mid-Bollinger Band of 224. So it might actually go down before it does go up. However, only time will tell. But yeah, I don't know. You guys, you know, I know you love these these hydrogen cell companies and these battery companies and all these little random tech companies that aren't really doing any business or are losing and bleeding money like crazy, but yet for some reason you think they're going to like change the world. I mean, I don't know. You know, I'm not trying to come at you guys. I'm not trying to attack you. But again, just looking at the history of this company, where they've been, where they went, how it's currently going. I mean, you know, again, I'm glad they picked revenue up, but I'm really not seeing anything that's, you know, staring me right in the eye saying, holy crap, you're an idiot if you don't buy this right now. I'm sorry, in my opinion, I'm just really not seeing it. You could potentially say the MACD just crossed, it looks like, they're on the weekly. But again, you know, even if it runs up to what, you know, 270, 280, it'll most likely reject and pull back again after that. Stock was fighting for a while. Look at this. Multiple fights to get above these moving averages, and even when it did, it immediately rejected here. Look at this rejection off the 50 day and the 200 day rejection, and then the 200 day keeps climbing, the 50 day keeps slipping, and then it bounces up to it and rejected, and then it pulls back, climbs up to it, and then rejected. I mean, that's what I'm saying, it's all right there in front of your face. And again, I'm not trying to beat the company up too much. If you're involved with the stock and you're up, you're down, you're sideways, I don't care. I, I do hope it all works out for you, whether I like it or not. But again, like I always say, there are so many other companies that are in better situations than a situation here, like a fuel cell, F-C-E-L. And, and it just grinds my gears that these are the stocks that everyone's talking about. Or, again, it'll be like some random stock like this that I feel personally, in my opinion, is not really worth anyone's time, energy, or attention right now. And then that'll be the video that gets like 700 views. Or even like Nikola, right? I, I did the video on Nikola. The stock looked terrible. I said it would keep slipping. A couple of people jumped down my throat in the comment section. You don't know what you're talking about. You should do something else. Blah, blah, blah. Stock keeps slipping. And, you know, hits new 52-week lows. I knew it was a piece of crap. Everyone's attacking me for basically saying it and calling it like it is. And then what happens? Can you believe that is my most popular video? The stock got like 11, 1,200 views like immediately right out of the gate just within a couple of days of me making the video. Still currently my most viewed video. And it's a piece of crap stock that doesn't deserve anyone's attention that continues to hit new 52-week lows. And even though everyone jumped out my throat when I did the video, hit 52-week lows immediately after making the video. And, and you know, that that's what I'm saying. But these are the stocks that you guys are holding on to, hoping and praying explode to the moon and become the next Tesla and Microsoft or, or Google or Amazon. It's To me, it just does not add up because those younger, newer companies in infancy that are actually generating revenue and increasing their business footprint, they are out there. And this is why people always say you have to do a lot of reading. You have to do a lot of due diligence. You can't just jump on Reddit, grab a symbol and, and go all in and just hope for the best. And, you know, if it doesn't work out, you can piss and moan in a forum for the next, uh, you know, 15 months until you get your liquidity up. Like, no one cares. No one cares. Do the smart thing. Follow the money. Right? I'm, I, this is essentially, again, the Buffett method we tell you about. You look for brand name companies that sell off that you can buy at cheap prices. You look for newer companies that have potentially been beaten up or they're flying underneath the radar and no one's paying attention to the consistent growth and the steady increase in revenue quarter over quarter, year over year. So you step in down here at two, three, four dollars a share and then three to five years down the road, all of a sudden that's a staple in everyone's portfolio that they're talking about every day on CNBC and the son of a bitch is at twenty, twenty two, twenty seven dollars a share. 
and you bought in all the way back at 278 or some dumb shit like that. You understand what I'm saying? That's what you should be looking for. Now, again, this company might be doing bigger and better things, and maybe a year down the road here, the stock is back up to five, six dollars, and I got it wrong. And listen, if you're involved, I hope I do get it wrong. I hope I have no idea what I'm talking about, and I hope it goes to the moon for everybody. However, I live here on Earth, and I am in something called reality, and technically, in reality, this stock is not worth your time, energy, or attention, and uh, again, there are many, many other situations out there that would have already made you money in the last 6 to 12 months, as opposed to just riding this downward just hoping and praying for some sort of an announcement or some sort of potential squeeze. But, hey, again, technically in the chart, you do have this downward trend. You do have earnings coming out again June 8th. So if you're involved in this one, I wish you the best of luck. But I'm going to leave it there. So once again, this is Stocks by the Numbers. I want to thank you guys for stopping by. I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their weekend. I know I'm coming at you guys on a Sunday. But, hey, you know, I hope we could uh, – do a couple of videos here and just talk to each other a little bit before the market's open tomorrow. And, you know, everyone just has a little bit of a game plan moving forward here for this week. But overall, like I always say, I understand that markets are rocky and volatile and uncertain. So I do wish everyone success. I hope everyone makes a couple of dollars. Thanks for stopping by. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, guys.